Question 9. A curve C has y is equal to x take 1 over x take 2 times 2x take 1. And the line L has equation y is equal to a half of x take 1. Part A says write down the equations of the asymptotes of C. So I'm just going to squeeze in these in over here. We know the asymptotes are going to be when the denominator um, is 0. So that would be when x is equal to 2 or when 2x take away 1 um, is equal to 0 so x is equal to a half and also as x tends to infinity um, that means that we're going to have an asymptote as y is equal to 0 okay so those are going to be our three asymptotes for part B, um, by forming and solving a suitable cubic equation, we want to find the x coordinates of the points of the intersecting lines of L and C. So basically, we're going to make these two things equal to each other. So I'll do part B over here. So we've got a half of x take away 1 equals x take away 1 over x take 2 times 2x take 1. Okay, and if I multiply both sides by um, the denominator, I've got a half of x take 1 times x take 2 times 2x take 1 is equal to x take 1. And then I'm just going to double both sides just to make this um, a little bit easier. Um, so that's going to be x take 1 times x take 2 times 2x take 1. Um, and that's going to be equal to 2 times this, but I'm going to subtract this onto this side as well. So that's going to be take away 2 times x take 1 equals 0. So just to be clear here, I, I doubled both sides, but then I subtracted the two lots of x take away 1 um, from both sides as well. So I've ended up with this here. I can now spot that there's a common factor here of x take 1. So I've got x take 1 here, and then I'm going to have x take 2 times 2x take 1 take away 2 inside my square brackets over here is equal to 0. So I know one of my factors is going to be x take 1. Um, I'm now going to expand and simplify this. So we've got x take 1. And then in here I'm going to have 2x squared um, subtract x, subtract 4x, so subtract 5x, plus 2, take away 2, um, is just going to be 0. Um, so this expanded gives us this here, which is equal to 0, and that means that's nice and easy, because if I fully factorise this now, I've got x times x take away 1, and I've taken the x out as a factor from here, so I've now got 2x take away 5, is equal to zero. Yeah, so just to be clear here, this was x times 2x take away 5. Okay, so um, by forming and solving, so we need to solve this to find the x coordinates of the points of intersection. So I'm going to have x is equal to zero as one solution, x is equal to one as another solution, and x is equal to um, 5 over 2, or we'll call it 2.5. Um, which is going to be my um, third solution. So those are going to be my three um, x coordinates for the intersections. So part C, so let's just draw a line over here. So part C says, given that C has no stationary points, sketch C and L on the same axes. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do part C over here. We'll do part C up here. Okay, and if I draw out my axes, okay, and um, right, so 
and I'm going to draw my asymptotes in first of all. So let's um, draw one at x equals two, and let's just move that along a little bit, and then we'll have another one at x equals a half over there and we'll have another one at um, y is equal to zero so we've got one that's on the axes as well okay right so um, we know that there's no stationary points and what I can do now uh, I know that it's going to approach zero um, over here if I try a value this here is going to be two so if I try a value that's just bigger than two um, into here so that's going to be positive um, two take away one is positive um, something just bigger than two take away two is going to be positive and this here is also going to be positive so I know that a value just higher than two is going to be there and I think it's going to approach my asymptote in that direction there. If I try something just the less than a half then that's going to be negative, that's going to be negative and something just less than a half is going to make that negative so that means that the whole thing is going to be negative so that means it's going to start over here and it's going to do something like that and if I try something just bigger than a half um, so that's going to be negative that's going to be negative um, and that will be positive so negative times positive is negative negative over negative is positive so we're going to have a positive value up here and if I try something just less than two that will be positive that will be negative that will be positive so we're going to have something that's negative so we'll have something over here um, and I think we're going to end up with something that looks like this here okay so let's just try and draw that a bit better it's, it's, it's going to kind of kink and come back so it's not a straight line okay right so this is what our um, graph is going to look like and I can also mark in any intersections because when um, when x is 0 here um, that's going to be a negative 1 and that will be negative 2 and um, negative 1 so negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 uh, negative 1 over 2 is going to be negative a half so that there is going to be negative a half and if y is 0 so if that there is 0 then x would have to be 1 so this value here is going to be 1 okay so it crosses the um, x-axis here at 1 and crosses the y-axis here at negative a half okay so so that was part C um, part D says hence solve this inequality here um, and that's going to be worth three marks so in order to solve this inequality I'm going to draw on the line y is equal to um, a half of x take away one so if I just write that as y is equal to a half of x take away a half with the brackets expanded I know that it's going to cross the um, y-axis at negative a half so it's going to cross the y-axis over here and I know it's going to have a gradient of half of x as well um, and when y is equal to 0 x will be equal to 1 so it's going to cross the axes there as well so if I draw in um, let's draw that line in in blue and it's going to look like this here
Okay, so we're looking for when the curve is above this line. So we're looking for all these values when the curve is above the line. So let's have a look. Well, the curve is above the line for all values when um, x is less than or equal to 0. So that's going to give us one region. So we can say that x is less than or equal to 0. Okay, and then we're above the line again over here when we get to um, a value greater than a half and it stays above the line until we get to this value of 1. So we've got a half and x would have to be greater than a half but less than or equal to 1 and that's this region here. Now we'll be careful here, it's um, a strict inequality here because it can't actually be equal to a half because a half is an asymptote. The curve then goes below the line again over here until we get to a value of 2 and as soon as we get past the value of 2 it's above the line again until we get to this point here. Now the x coordinate of that point here we know is going to be 2.5 from our solutions earlier. Yes we had 0, 1, and this one here is going to be 2.5. So we've got x is going to be greater than 2. Again, it can't be equal to 2 because 2 is an asymptote, but it's going to be less than or equal to 2.5. So remember, when we go past 2.5, it's going to be below the line again. Okay, so those are going to be our three inequalities. X is less than or equal to zero. X is greater than half, but less than or equal to one. And X is greater than two, but less than or equal to 2.5. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you next time.